It's important to remember that plants are very good for aquatic ecosystems. They provide habitat for a lot of different critters. They provide dissolved oxygen. They really make our pond systems a healthy and happy environment when they're in the right numbers. Once we get about a, above about a 20 to 25% ratio of aquatic weeds in our pond, that's when we want to consider control. So we came out today to talk about some ways to control that vegetation that you might see in the pond, along with a little bit of why you are seeing that vegetation pop up. The four main ways that you can control vegetation in a pond, physical control, biological control, chemical control, and mechanical control. The first one uh, would be physical control. So that's changes to the landscape, changes to the pond that we might be able to make, uh, like digging out or dredging a pond that's older uh, or drawing it down in the winter. So one of the important things that we're trying to aim for is a slope of three to one on the edge of our pond. So for every three feet that we go out in our pond, we wanna get about a foot deeper in depth. That three to one slope is really important because shallow habitats allow light to hit the bottom of the pond and that sunlight is what's allowing those plants to grow. Almost every plant that we are talking about in, a, in aquatic vegetation control actually grows on the bottom of the pond, reaches up to the surface or floats to the surface and that's when we consider it a problem. So if we can reduce the amount of sunlight hitting the bottom of the pond, we can often help to reduce the amount of aquatic vegetation that we have in our pond as well. The next type of control that we would talk about would be mechanical control. Getting out a rake, pulling the weeds out of the system. That's really important because that allows us to get the nutrients out of the pond and take them away from other vegetation growing down the road. So that's really where we wanna start most of the time is with that mechanical control. We're out today removing some submerged vegetation from a pond and we're doing that today using a long tined rake. So the long tines on the end of that rake really help you to grab onto the vegetation and pull large amounts out. So you just wanna lift up the rake to walk to the edge and slowly let it down. It's gonna sink down to the bottom and then you just slowly pull it back in. And as you're doing that, it's gonna grab onto that submerged vegetation. In this case, it's mostly coontail. Now, one of the things that I'm doing here is I'm allowing this vegetation to pile up but I'm gonna come back through uh, with a wheelbarrow and, and make sure that I collect all this vegetation and then take it somewhere outside of the watershed. With mechanical control, the important thing to remember is that we're getting those nutrients out of the system. In order for that to be most effective, we need to make sure that those plants that we gather, we take all that biomass outside of the watershed where they can decay, decompose, and release those nutrients, but they're not gonna wash back into the pond. We're out at a pond today that has a bunch of floating vegetation. And so the two main types that we see around our area are called water meal and duckweed. So long time rates won't work well for looking at floating vegetation. It's just too small and too fine for that rake to collect. So what we're gonna use today is called a parachute skimmer. It's got a weighted bar at the bottom and a floating bar at the top. And that's gonna allow it to stay open and collect a lot of the vegetation in this floating mesh part in the middle. So the first thing that you want to do is make sure that you tie one end of the rope to your wrist. This will make sure that you don't end up accidentally throwing it all in the water, having to get a nice mess going and collecting it. Once you do that, you're just going to kind of collect it all in a ball and you're going to throw it out as far as you can into the pond. You're going to gently pull it back along the surface. This is a relatively shallow pond but it's gonna collect a lot of that matter. That water meal is so fine that it might go through the mesh and that's okay. We're gonna collect quite a bit of it and get it out of the water. And you can see we've collected a lot of that matter in the parachute skimmer. So in this cast, we collected two different plants. We collected that duckweed that's at the bottom and the water meal that's at the top. So another type of vegetation is called emergent vegetation. In emergent vegetation, the roots like to be wet or in the water, and the plant itself grows up out of the water. So two good examples that we're looking at are called water primrose and cattails. So these two plants can grow around the perimeter of a pond. If not taken care of, they can quickly start to fill in that pond. So you'd wanna make sure you control them in some way. A long tined rake can work if there's not a large abundance of them, but once they get established, the roots can become too hard to just use a rake alone. You might need something like a weed razor to throw out. The razor can cut through the root system and allow you to pull that vegetation to the shoreline. Remember, it's important to remove those weeds and get them out of the watershed to reduce the nutrient load in your pond. 
After you've raked out the plants from your pond, a lot of times there'll be little pieces left that you just can't possibly get out. And that's when chemical control can be really helpful. So that's adding an herbicide. Most people wanna start there because it's a closed system. If you kill those plants, they're gonna sink down to the bottom and decay and release those nutrients. So chemicals are an important tool in our tool set. They're not always the answer. Getting those nutrients out is generally the best place to start. When applying herbicides to a pond, it's important to, to make sure that the herbicide is labeled for aquatic use. And so it's illegal, it's against federal law, to apply a terrestrial herbicide to an aquatic setting. So you wanna make sure that you read the label and make sure that it's legal for using in an aquatic system. The other thing that's really important is that you follow the, the label regulations and follow the strategy for applying the chemical. That makes sure that the chemical will be safe for your pond and it won't harm any of the organisms, fish, invertebrates, other critters that you might find in your pond. Biological control is one of those things that can be beneficial, it's definitely a tool, but a lot of people jump to that and there's there's can be negative consequences. So understanding biological control, you definitely wanna know your system before you do that. Well, thanks for joining me today. I hope that that information helps you manage the aquatic vegetation in your pond. Make sure you follow us and subscribe to our channel to get more information to help you with your pond and wildlife management needs.